Mike, uh, I talked to Brooks like about that pass to bias made to him, and he said you expect that play because you're in the NHL, and that's a play that yeah. an NHL player should make. But he said when I looked up and saw it was him, a kid playing in his first game, he said I didn't have that type of poise in my first game. What did you like about that particular play? Well, I liked that he was six foot three and two and a quarter when he made it. That's what I liked about it. And then obviously he has the hands to do that, can really skate. Uh, and saying all that, I've watched him quite a bit with the Marlies, and, and you don't see that every day. So that's the biggest challenge for all these kids. Is you get fired up and you play one game. Now you play two games, but then when you've played you know, a year and then two years, and then can you keep doing it and can you keep getting better? And the other thing, when I was watching the Red Wings game last night, uh, and they played well, but the thing that stood out for me watching Parisi, yeah, if anybody wants to maximize their skill set, you know, all you got to do is watch that guy and how determined and hard and competitive he is. And so a guy like Lindbergh, if he watches that guy, it gives him an example of what he's, what's the benchmark is for his skill set. Mike, having lived, uh, lived the playoff streak in Detroit for the last decade, how much pride is there in that? And how much maybe pressure does that bring that, to keep it going? Well, the pride is immense, obviously. The pressure is that means you have a chance. If you don't have a chance, uh, you know, we're not feeling much playoff pressure right now here. That means you don't have a chance. So when you have a chance, uh, that's all you can ask for, right? To me, and I think that's a real good thing. Uh, every year when the good teams, there's always some tough times. You know, everyone thinks you win 10-1 every night. That's not the way you win 2-1 a whole bunch of times, and some nights you don't have it, and you still find a way to win. That's what good teams do over and over again. You have a, quite a, an emotional attachment to that organization. Have you watched them a lot this season, or have you tried purposely because of that? No. No, I haven't watched a lot, but I mean, Brad Holland works for us, and so he's got the bond all the time. So when I, you know, I'm with him, I got to watch him. Uh, when we're playing him, I watch him. They're a real good team. They're real well organized. They they play hard to get good players, and they've done it well for a long time. How is uh, Sashnikov feeling? Is he getting closer? Yeah, I don't. You know, we're going to be careful, obviously, there, just because the kind of injury he had. But uh, we'll be careful with him, and I don't know if he gets in a game or not. Mike, uh, we're down to a week left in, in the least regular season. Do you have plans yet for after that? Will you be around the Marlies, or do you know how you'll? Yeah, I got plans for it. Yeah. Can you share them or? No. <laughs> but I do have plans. Yeah. Mike uh, Nazim obviously got the fine for for the diving. Is there a concern that he might get a reputation? Do you talk to him? Or well, I think he has a reputation. I think uh, it made it clear the previous four games. Uh, this what my recommendation for him would be is don't change the things you do. Play hard be mean, uh, compete, be good defensively, have a good summer, come back ready to play and be a better pro, have a better shot, and and then don't dive. And But when someone trips you, you're tripped. And it's just real simple. Play hard as you possibly can. And uh, the more, the harder you play, the more penalties you're going to draw. And... That's what I would do. I just play hard. I'd have the puck like he has. He has good edges. He draws lots of penalties. You don't have to embellish anything. 